after 35 years on television, there's no sign that life on Albert Square is slowing down. And now it's Linda's demons threatening to get the better of her. And uh, actress Kelly Bright, who plays Linda Carter uh, on these standards, is here now, and it's lovely to see you. Yeah, it is. Yes, it um, is. You, uh, you say you can't. I can't wash myself. Can't wash myself. It's <laughs> very good, you know. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. It's been a a, a real gift of a storyline. Yeah. yeah. Well, her this alcoholism story, which we'll come to in a moment, as far as how seriously you're treating it, but for her as a character, it hasn't come on suddenly. This has been a slow burn, hasn't it? Yes. I. For, for me, I had to sort of... When they sort of floated the idea to me about Linda, Linda's alcoholism, I, I, it was about six months before we sort of started the story. And then I started to sort of try and work backwards and think about all the things that have happened to Linda mm. during the course of the show, but then also her history before, previous to that. You know, she grew up in a pub. Her dad died when she was very young. And so, for me, I've gone right back to that moment. And I have actually in my head, made her father an alcoholic that was perhaps... And so he died very young from his right. alcoholism, but she was probably unaware that yeah, there was yeah. an issue there. And, and, and because of her lifestyle, I think she could probably count on one hand the amount of days that she's not had a drink. And that doesn't mean that she's always necessarily had a problem, but it's part of her life. Yeah, it yeah. is embedded in her life. Mm. So, uh, well, what I was going to say was her and, her and Mick, obviously... A, very close and very tight, but there seemed to be a shift. And the moment that seemed to happen was when Ollie's life was put in danger. And suddenly it seemed that then she was kind of on her own with this a bit more. Well, she's, I mean, it's, I find the stuff, because I have children of my own, I find all the stuff with Ollie really hard to do and also to watch. And, um, but I, I feel like she has crossed a line. She's, she's got herself into a place where she's on this treadmill of, um, oh, I can hear myself in the background. No, no, sorry, uh, it's all off. right. Um, on this sort of treadmill of drinking to block out all the things that, that she doesn't want to have to think about or deal with. But, of course, when she's in that state, she can't remember what she's saying, doing. She's completely irresponsib mm. irresponsible. And then she comes back from that into sobriety. Now that's unbearable because she now has all this guilt and shame yeah. and everything. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's... A vicious circle. She's completely mm -hmm. got herself. We've, uh, we've got a clip here. Um, and, and because of the fact that she burnt Ollie's supper and fell asleep mm -hmm. and he ended up on, on the roof, mm -hmm. tensions are obviously running high. Wow. Wow, it's not looking good, is it? No. Um, the preparation that you put yeah. into to acting those scenes, um, mm. quite incredible, actually. Um, you, did, will you explain what you did? Oh, gosh. Well, I was terrified. As well as being excited by the storyline, I have to say I was terrified because I think it's so hard to play drunk well. It's a bit like... It's really exposing. You feel mm -hmm. very vulnerable. It's a bit like running around with you no clothes on, in yeah. a way. Um, and so... And we work very quickly. So I knew I had to do a lot of work before I came in to actually film the scenes. And so, I mean, I, I did some research. Which was? <laughs> I went to my caravan in Cornwall and I drank quite a lot and filmed myself. Mm. Right. And I doing your lines? Doing my lines, but then also just every 10 minutes, I would sort of... T I went with my dog and I'd <laughs> sort of film myself. And as I, what was amazing about that was you could see the alcohol sort of hit me in waves as it was literally coming into my bloodstream. And then I, it was also... I, I'd repeat myself all the time. Yeah. i keep saying the same things. And then I'd forget... I was waiting to watch Strictly on the television and I ended up sort of missing the whole thing. And, I mean, it was fascinating. It was, it was a really helpful. fascinating and very helpful yeah. exercise. And you colour-coded your script as well, didn't you? I did. I mean, this is... Gee, this is very <laughs> clever, actually. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a bit odd. I, <laughs> all really I committed, actually. It's a really good actually. idea. Well, it's... we film out of order, yeah. obviously. There was a huge... It's sort of... It all be, sort of blew up on the New Year's Eve episode, which was this big episode that followed Linda's journey on on a New Year's Eve. Yeah. And obviously we filmed out of order. And so I knew I had to work out wh how drunk I was going to be at each point in the script. Mm. So, because we'd be jumping backwards and forwards and all over the place. And so I gave it like a colour coded chart. So I knew, OK, this is an orange scene or if it's black, it's, we're really... And then it might jump, I was sick in the middle of the episode and then I start drinking again, so yeah. it, we went back a bit. And I, did, I, just, I took my contact well, lenses out as well. That was a... And that, because without them, you... I can't see, can't see it. 
<laughs> so that helps. Yeah, well, that you must have done something right, because Sharon Marshall sat here, and I think it was we were watching one of the clips, yeah. and she said she's the best drunk actress I've, I've ever it's seen. So high. it's obviously well, working. Big, um, big support. Drink Aware say uh, this storyline will help put a spotlight on the potentially harmful result of getting into the habit of drinking regularly. The script mm -hmm. writers are sensitively showing the journey of how easy it can be for someone to develop risky drinking habits. Mm. Um, and um, and we should also, before we let you go, because there's a, there's a big moment coming up, the 35th anniversary. Yeah. And you you told us during the break <laughs> that it, it, it's epic. It is the mo that it's the most epic week that I have ever been involved in on the show. I've been on the show six and a half years. I'm really excited about seeing it. So that, I think, says a lot. I, I'm as probably as excited as anybody. And what, else. what does it centre around? Can you tell us anything? I know, obviously, like we I want to get you into any trouble. I can tell you that it's it centres around the, uh, there is a party on a boat on the Thames, mm. and I get wet. Okay. We I'm also among know. People. Yes, that yes, yes. The Grim Reaper does stalk that boat. He does indeed. So someone someone dies. Yes, but, I can say that. But you're you're. Still talking about the show. So, <laughs> yes, yeah, so it, it might you're, be. You're me. not on holiday right me. now. You're here, <laughs> so hopefully she's all right. I think Sharon Marshall's going behind the scenes actually next week. So I think we've got some some sort of. Oh, it's exciting! Very pictures. exciting. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and how's Danny? He's good. He's really good. He's you know he's been so brilliant to work with as well. You know, it's not just. It's not just me doing mm. this. It's everybody that contributes to this storyline, and I love I love working with Danny. He's just a joy. Well, we hope that they stay together, just because you two are so good together. He's my telly husband. Yeah. You know all about yeah, that. Yeah, you know all about that. You know all about <laughs> that. Uh, um, thank you so much. Um, East Enders tonight, seven thirty, BBC One, and then tomorrow at yeah. eight. Um, and so thank, thank you very you. much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.